Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Diego and today we're going to be talking about sleep. And if you're here, you're probably not getting enough of it. So today I'm going to give you my five tips to help you get more sleep on a regular basis and fix the root cause as to why you're not sleeping. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is eating before bed. Um, so in our society, it's traditional to have a big dinner, right? And oftentimes people eat these big dinners right before bed within a couple hours. So they'll have dinner at six, go to bed at eight or nine, or they'll eat at eight and go to bed at 10 or 11. And really, it, you know, what you should be practicing is not eating a big meal within four hours of actually laying down to go to sleep. Um, now, there's different doctors and people who've said, hey, two hours is enough, three. Really, I've tested everything. For me, four hours is, is crucial to get a good night's rest because what's essentially happening is you're, when you're eating a big meal, your body starts to go into overdrive to try to digest everything, right? And water will follow sugar. As your body's trying to get rid of the sugar, um, the water follows it. And essentially that's why you have to wake up a few times a night to go to the bathroom. Um, and it's also just hard on the body to digest food um, while you're sleeping. So as a good practice, just don't eat four hours before bed. And on that note, you want to make it a smaller portion. Um, traditionally, you know, everyone eats a big dinner. Uh, the reality is your biggest meal of the day should be breakfast and you should taper off from there. So try to take that into account. And I guarantee if you try it, if you're eating a big meal right now or you're eating snacks before bed, cut that out four hours, you should be good to go. Okay, tip number two is supplementation. Now, in your body, if things are working properly, you're getting enough nutrients, you're digesting things well, um, you're getting a good night's rest. When the body starts to break down, meaning we're eating a lot of uh, sugar, we're drinking a lot of alcohol, we're taking in a lot of carbs, it's really heavy and that like weighs on your digestive system. So if your digestive system isn't working properly, it's not absorbing the right nutrients, therefore producing the chemicals in your body that you need to get proper energy and sleep. If you're suffering from any of these symptoms that I'm putting up here on the screen, odds are that your system just isn't working as efficiently as it should. So for me, what really worked was trying to help treat the root cause, which was A, eating more correctly, cutting out a lot of those bad things like sugars, alcohols, and excessive carbs. Um, in the meantime, if that's not part of your lifestyle, that's not something you're willing to compromise on, you need to get the proper nutrients. Um, Essentially, the company that I really trust is called CodeAge. They make a product called Methyl Elite. And essentially what this is, is a series of vitamins that's gonna restore um, the essential compounds and nutrients you need uh, in order to get a good night's sleep, have proper energy, and uh, get a good night's rest. Um, ultimately, we're just not getting enough of that. And in, in our daily lives, and the fact that we just add all of these additional foods, uh, really weighs down, you know, on our on our systems, and we're not absorbing nutrients the right way. So supplementation is crucial. This is a company that I actually uh, trust. I've used them prior with probiotics when I had a stomach issue, um, and they test everything. And I can't say enough about Code H and, and this product. So if you're interested, uh, you know, no obligation. Feel free to do your own research. But uh, I've left a link in my description. You can use code Diego for 10% off any orders. All right, guys. The third thing I want to talk about is this bad boy right here. Screen time before bed. Now you've probably heard a million times you shouldn't look at your phone before you go to bed. The reality is it's true. What's essentially happening is you have a bright screen up in front of your face as you're trying to get ready to go to bed. And you're scrolling and you're scrolling and that will trigger a few things. So the first one is that bright light is telling your body, hey, it's still daylight out, you should still be awake. So it's very, very hard to go to sleep. The other thing that's happening is essentially what I call the dopamine slot machine. Um, anytime you're on any of these apps like Instagram, Facebook, what have you, you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And every time you're doing that, you're looking for a better picture and it's triggering a bunch of emotions and reactions within your body. Um, you know, looking at things that are political, um, you know, exciting, funny, whatever it might be, it's triggering reactions in your body and it's just gonna make it harder and harder for you to go to sleep. Um, so my recommendation is if you can, try to limit your screen time. Um, you know, don't use a phone, a tablet, to watch TV, play video games within two hours of bedtime. Um, my recommendation is if you have family, just 
chat with them, you know, uh, sit down on the couch, read a book, um, anything you can to kind of put your mind at ease. Meditation is also great. Um, but as a rule of thumb, if you're not sleeping, this is probably the main culprit in our society right now. Put it down. Um, I even, to eliminate temptation, will put my phone in my office, um, which is totally away from the bedroom, uh, before I go to bed. My family's with me, no one's calling, that's, you know, it's not gonna be life or death that urgent to where I couldn't wake up and address the issue. Um, so I'm not missing that on anything and it just eliminates the temptation. So as a rule of thumb, uh, for me, I just put it in my office away from everything and that helps eliminate the distraction and be wanting to go for it, you know, when I can't sleep. Okay, tip number four, we're gonna talk about temperature. Temperature uh, is crucial, and a lot of people are starting to realize this now, but the ideal temperature in the room for you to go to bed is anywhere from 65 degrees to 68 degrees. Now, I know a lot of you don't want to turn on your AC units every night, um, you know, that just drives up the bill, but that's something that I had to do in order to get a proper night's sleep. Typically in the past, it would be anywhere from 70 to 75 degrees in the, in the house, and it's just too warm. I'm sure you guys have experienced a better night's sleep when it was a little bit colder or you had a fan blowing on you. Uh, there's even beds now that are made that are, you know, they're pretty pricey, but you could get one uh, that regulate temperature in the mattress. So that's another avenue you can take. Um, my recommendation, if you have access to AC, um, if you don't mind spending the money on that AC bill, um, crank that thing down to about 65, 66 degrees, and you'll notice you definitely get a better night's sleep. All right, guys, tip number five is actually going to be a sound machine. Now, I know I told you, put your phones away from your bed in another room. Uh, a lot of you guys use them for you know alarms and maybe some ambient sound. You can go to Target, Walmart, wherever you wanna go, Amazon, and you can pick up literally like a five or $10 sound machine. And what that does is it recreates um, you know, ambient sound. So there's a couple different options. Some people like to fall asleep to the sound of rain. Um, some is just white noise. Some is like a rainforest. For me, white noise works good. There's a certain sound that the sound machine makes and it's like a And you can imagine way back in the day being in your mother's womb and all the sounds of stomach, outside noises from wherever your mom was at, um, you know, blood rushing through the system, all of that creates that sound. So as much, it's very, very peaceful and that's soothing to a lot of people. Um, this one really changed the game for me. Um, you know, I have two kids and so uh, it also helps them sleep when they were having a tr tough time sleeping as a baby. So I can't recommend it enough. Uh, if you don't have a sound machine, go out and get one, they're super cheap. Um, and it really creates a good vibe and atmosphere in your room um, that is conducive to helping you fall asleep. All right, now I know I told you it was just five, but this other one, I just wanna sneak in here um, we're, we'll call it number six or number five plus one, but that is working out. I can't tell you enough how much I am a proponent of this, but working out every single day in some way, you don't have to go to a gym. It could be a walk outside, it could be a run. You, could, you can do anything, just get moving. But expending those calories and getting your body into that routine um, it's just, you know, helping your body regulate itself. It knows when you're awake and it knows when it should go to sleep. So if you're working out first thing in the morning when you wake up or even throughout the day, your body's gonna be more ready to fall asleep at night. You burn those calories, you're making yourself a little bit more tired. If you're just sitting at a desk all day, it's pretty sedentary and it's pretty similar to just laying there hoping to fall asleep. So your body doesn't know when to make these changes. So uh, get your body into the routine, get out there, go for a walk. Um, go to the gym, work out, do something. Um, it's super crucial and it'll definitely help you fall asleep better. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope these five plus one tips helped you actually get some sleep. Um, if they do, come back to the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, I'll be putting out more content like this. And again, thank you so much again for watching. Have a good night's rest.